Finally, it is Australian Open time. And I'm going to tell you right now, Ash Barty is going to win it. That is my tip. My name is Micah Babel, former top 30 WTA pro, 19 times Grand Slam competitor, and the Australian Open were my favorite Grand Slam to play because people were treated differently there. I always felt like just a number at the other Grand Slams a little bit. At the Australian Open, people were super friendly and everybody, staff, organizers, volunteers, really always treated you as if you really mattered, which, hey, we actually did. So stick with me here a little bit more um, because I wanna address one thing before I get into my draw predictions, if you will. I've heard a lot of really negative comments about players withdrawing when they were already in the tournaments. So that was in particular Ash Barty, Iga Swiatek, and Naomi Osaka. Now, everybody who was complaining about that, think back to last year's French Open when Roger Federer withdrew from his match against Matteo Berrettini to save his energy for Wimbledon. And I did not read a whole lot of negative things. He knew that if he gets really far, he's going to withdraw. And I'm telling you, Naomi Osaka, Iga Swiatek, and Ashley Barty know that as well, that if they go far in the prep tournaments, they might skip one. And here's why. Somebody like me had to play for money. I had to play for ranking points. Those are really no longer the main reasons why Grand Slam winners compete. For Roger Federer, of course, it's all about winning the 21st Grand Slam title. For Ash Barty, it is about winning her hometown Grand Slam or a home country Grand Slam. For the other two, Iga Swiatek, it's about winning another Grand, Grand Slam. Naomi Osaka, it's about defending her title. They're working and operating in a different world from the rest of the players. So they know exactly what it takes to compete at a Grand Slam, go deep into the draw, win seven matches. And if any little thing is tweaking a little bit, there's any little teeny tiny amount of pain or tiredness, fatigue, they are gonna withdraw. So I'm not sure where the difference is, why it was okay that Federer did it and people are talking about, yes, he's the GOAT, he can do whatever he wants, and the other three are getting kind of attacked a little bit more, and I might want to say a lot more, actually. So for them, it's not about the title of winning a title in Adelaide or in Sydney. The titles that matter for these people are the top four, the Grand Slams, Indian Wells, the Miami Open, and Rome, and maybe one or two other big ones. It's not about the money anymore. They don't have to play one more match in their lives. They are financially set. So they do not have to compete if they don't have to, and they feel they've had enough preparation to go for the big one. So that just to start with, and I hope that makes a lot more sense. So keep that in mind when we're talking about withdrawing from draws, who it is who does that. I wouldn't have because, yeah, I was not competing for Grand Slam titles, unfortunately. Now, here's the reason why Ash Barty will win this. She has a complete game. There are no holes in her game. I think she does match up really well against pretty much anyone because she dominates the match. She's not waiting for anybody else to impose their game plan onto her. She's got answers for everything. And what stuns me actually is that she's shown us a bunch of times now that after taking off a long time, two, three, four months, US Open was her last tournament before she now competed in Adelaide, which she won fairly easily, she doesn't need these matches to win the big ones. She has shown us that in 2020 and came back in 21 and dominated. So she does not need a whole lot of match toughness to get into because she's just so well-tuned as a 
tennis machine, if you will, that she can call up her performance right from the start. She knows how to win a Grand Slam. She's the one to beat. What is a little unfortunate to my mind is that the very top of the bracket, the first 16 with Ash Barty as the number one seed, is absolutely freakishly stacked. And we could see a round of 16 matchup between Ash Barty and Naomi Osaka. I would have loved to at least see them as far out as in the semis. If we could have the perfect world, maybe just in the title match, but they might actually have to play each other to just make it into the quarters. But before that happens, you have two players that actually could head um, against each other in the second round. You've got Belinda Bencic and Amanda Anisimova, who just won the tournament, the warm-up tournament in Melbourne, and who had a very forgettable 2021, but who looked really good. So Bencic and Anisimova could play each other to then play Naomi Osaka. And with Naomi Osaka, we kind of don't really know exactly where she stands if she can maintain the level of really high play for a long period of time, because I think she really took a bunch off after she decided to not play after the US Open. I don't think she played tennis for a whole while. And she did say her reason to withdraw from another prep tournament was that her body had to get used to having that strain of, of playing back to back to back matches. So I see a physical advantage for Ash Barty there. So the rest of the top half looks fairly businesslike, I want to say. So the two names there to look out for, I think, are Ans Jabeur and Maria Sakkari. And both of them had phenomenal seasons last year. And I guess it's called the sophomore slump a little bit that we might see that. I don't really see a whole lot of players there that I would be scared of for them, but you never know. There's a Kaya Juvan, very young player, really good player. There's uh, Jessica Begula, who is always good for an upset. If everything goes according to plan and the seating list, it would be Ans Jabor and Maria Sakkari. Always a great match to watch. As I said often, I love Ans Jabour, but let's see how she deals with the pressure of now being the person that has to defend a chunk of points. Now in the bottom half, there are going to be a few interesting matchups. So if everything should go according to plan, or according to the seeding, we would see a semifinal between Babora Krejcikova and Irina Sabalenka. I don't see... Arena Sabalenka going very deep. It would really surprise me because she had two horrific tournaments to prep. And it wasn't necessarily that she was beaten by absolutely fantastic players. They are good players. Don't ever get me wrong on that. To be at the level where they're playing, they have to be great players. But both players had to literally just wait until Sabalenka would beat herself because it was either a flaming winner or a ball in the fence. I'm exaggerating a little bit, but as a number two in the world, you would want more consistency in the level of play uh, than Arena Sabalenka has shown. Babora Krachikova, on the other hand, is always a really great player. She actually saved seven match points against Annette Kantevite the other day, who's also in the bottom half. So we could see a matchup there at some point. And I think she's a player that nobody ever talks about because she's very unspectacular in how she goes about her business. But I think that is something that we should highlight a little bit. Why do we always have to have drama to highlight somebody? So that is definitely somebody that I'm having my eye on. And then there is Paula Badosa, who just won then against Barbora Krejcikova, also in a third set tiebreaker in Sydney. And she has a little bit of a spicy first round against um, Ayla Tomjanovic, who is always good for an upset, especially when she plays in front of her Australian compatriots. So if Paula Badosa wins that, 
I think she's going to go far because to me, when you watch her now, you see the joy that she has, the newfound belief in like, whoa, this is where I really, really, really belong. Because I don't know if you remember that she was a really, really good junior and already um, crowned as the next Maria Sharapova for various reasons, play style, and also because she's a very attractive woman. And that all just got too much at some point. So she had to get a little bit of distance to the game here. And I think if she gets through that first round, we will see a really good tournament from her. And then we also have Madison Keys somewhere in the mix there in the uh, lower half. She just won a tournament, one of the prep tournaments. And unfortunately, she's playing Sophia Kennan. So that's, a, again, always really unfortunate when you see that big of a matchup right in the first round but that is just the level of play that you have at Grand Slams and speaking of Grand Slams of course let's look at the two sensations that really got us going at the U.S. Open we have Amaradu Kanu playing Sloane Stevens. that is a rough one again she really got her high knee kicked I do have to say that was to an extent really painful to watch her against Elena Rybakina and the, was it too early to play? Was it a good idea to play? Yes, I think so. You do want to know where you stand competitively and also physically, but it for sure is not an easy round. Sloan Steven is a very, very experienced player and she's been around the block. She has had her super highs, she's had her super lows, and has gone through it, has found ways through it, and she's not gonna be rattled by playing somebody who the media is really interested in, and or the fans. And then we have Leila Fernandez, she's playing Madison Inglis, a uh, Australian wildcard player, and that should be, should be an easy one. Now, another match that I'm going to have my eyes on from a German perspective is Angelique Kerber because she's playing Kaya Kanepi. And that can be a ooh, uncomfortable first round because Kaya Kanepi is a player who, on a day when she's on, she can hack anyone off the court. And on a day that she's not, looks it can go a little ugly the other way, but that's not an easy first round. So these are my first round picks or my first round matches that I'm looking forward to. And I would love to hear from you in the comments who you are looking forward to watching and who you are picking to win it all. So let me know in the comments who's going to win the 2022 Australian Open on the women's side.